Hi, I'm Dr. Sandra Paulson, and this is my therapy dog, Abby, who decided to join me on her own here uh, while I was recording, so I'll let her stay. There's another one, too. Um, this is the next in my series of brief recordings for EMDR clinicians and EMDR clients regarding complex skill sets that therapists need to have to successfully do EMDR for clients with complex trauma histories. I've already talked about ego state therapy and the early trauma approach. This time I wanna talk briefly about somatic work. Somatic work comes from, oh, a number of people. Some of it started with Gendlin, who talked about tracking, Peter Levine, uh, Sharon Stanley, various others, Pat Ogden, these are people who have been contributing to the somatic field, and I studied it some time ago and have been combining it and teaching it at an um, introductory level how to use some of these somatic procedures with EMDR. That is to say, I don't see any benefit for most people from doing just somatic work because EMDR is so much more efficient and powerful. But people with complex trauma histories often need to start out with somatic work for a number of reasons. Number one is that people with complex trauma histories often found that the body was not a safe place to live and so they learned to not be embodied. You can't do EMDR successfully if you can't tolerate body sensation. And I mean both pleasant and unpleasant body sensation, and similarly pleasant and unpleasant emotion or, or affect, as we say. So um, the first order of business is that a client has to be able to tolerate being in their body. So grounding procedures are helpful for that. Being tracking what's in the body with curiosity in a mindful way, in a moment-to-moment -moment way, and it resembles Buddhist mindfulness. Additionally, it's very helpful that the therapist is curious with the client about what's happening in that moment-to-moment -moment way. That helps the client um, repair the fact that there may not have been somebody interested or paying attention their whole childhood or they were never on anybody's radar screen. That, that's especially true if the parent were, if the parents were narcissists or otherwise preoccupied. And sometimes they're perfectly decent parents who are, who had an, uh, had to go back to work, work three jobs, have 12 kids, or otherwise were preoccupied, but sometimes it's because the parents were actually malignant or ill. Alcoholism, schizophrenia, or other illnesses, can domestic violence can interfere with a parent's capacity to be a good parent. So the child may never have been on the radar screen. So when the therapist is attending with curiosity in a moment-to-moment -moment way about what's happening in the client, the client not only learns how to pay attention and track in their own body, but they also have the, the joy and the reparative intimacy. It's a kind of sociable intimacy that, that they may have never experienced before, that somebody actually is curious about what's going on inside. So that's a marvelous and reparative thing. Additionally, as um, when we do somatic resourcing, that means that the person comes to notice how it feels in their body when their ventral vagal nervous system is activated. It's a fancy word, it's a Stephen, Stephen Porges word that refers to when the body, is, when everything is well and we're relaxed and calm and we're socially engaged, in this case with the therapist or with anything enjoyable like nature or poodles, then that causes us to, our ventral vagal nervous system to be activated. And the more that is activated, that means the client spending less time in fight and flight or immobilization surrender. See, fight and flight, that's a sympathetic nervous system. Adrenaline response, heart pounding, prepare to run, prepare to fight. 
The dorsal vagal nervous system is when the client is helpless, hopeless, dissociated, frozen, immobilized, surrendered, and in the extreme case, prepared for death. It can also be when we're asleep, like, like somebody I know. But so the more time the client is spending in the ventral vagal nervous system, the stronger they get. And as we get stronger, that increases the client's capacity. Um, and it's called the window of tolerance. That's from Dan Siegel, 1999. He talked about what can the client tolerate? If the client can't tolerate doing trauma work, then they'll just belly up the minute you try. So we rather we want clients to feel strong enough to do the necessary work. So that comes out of the somatic work as well. Another benefit of the somatic work is that it helps the clients get an introduction to trauma processing. Now, EMDR tends to target the worst part of the trauma. And for somebody with PTSD from the fiery car crash, that may work just fine, very time efficient. But for people with complex trauma histories, if you try to go right, go for the gusto and go to the worst part of the trauma, that it's gonna blow them right out of the water and they'll either be overwhelmed or shut down. So what we do instead, using what's called either pendulation or oscillation, it means that we nibble around the edge of the trauma vortex and then go back over to a resource to activate the ventral vagal nervous system and then slowly back over to the trauma vortex. And curiously enough, that metabolizes, begins to gently metabolize the trauma. So that way the client gets a gentle introduction to trauma, which also strengthens them. They become less avoidant, and then they'll be readier to eventually do EMDR. And you see, from my frame of reference, we always want to eventually get them to EMDR because it beats somatic work hands down, in my opinion, in terms, for, once they can do it, it's very efficient. So um, there's more to somatic work, but this is a brief intro, so I'll stop there. There's um, clinicians who want, MDR clinicians who want to learn some of the basics of somatic work can find it in my two-day workshop at the Steve Frankel Group. The link to that is on my website at bainbridgepsychology.com. Thanks for your interest. And also there's a, um, a scholarly book that this particular book is not suitable for the public like my other, uh, most of my other books are. The cartoon books are uh, suitable for the public. The scholarly book, The Neurobiology and Treatment of Traumatic Dissociation Toward an Embodied Self, which is by Springer, co-edited by Lanius, Paulson, and Corrigan, is um, scholarly and it also has a great deal to say about somatic work and um, the neurobiology of trauma and it's, and that's the substrate to um, what happens in the body in trauma and also what happens with somatic work so thanks for listening bye-bye <laughs>